Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is up? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook, got you shook. Not Dead Yet, season premiere. Tonight, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. episode that we thought was lost and it's gonna fucking stay that way but dead wasn't good enough for scott so here we are resurrecting demon wind into our fucking lives this movie is genuinely worse the second time but hopefully the episode (laughs) is releasable this time we're joined once again by b kelly to discuss a movie that one youtuber called on par with evil dead hey youtuber go fuck yourself tonight on horror movie night man i you guys gotta chill. This movie is fun. <laughs> it's it wasn't. it wasn't. I'm gonna before you got on, I was talking. I was like, you know, a lot of the movies we do, they're just so entertainingly bad. And this just wasn't a very good movie. Well, <laughs> here's the problem with it. It's the editing. Because this movie is an hour and thirty seven minutes. And it should have been like an hour and ten. That's about all yeah. that I had the time for. I I Watch this on YouTube as is normal at 1.5 speed to 2x speed. I did not watch any of it at normal speed. So this is my third watch through it and it was difficult, but I know that there, I, this is one of those movies where if I had a free afternoon, I would like chop out the good parts and have like a five minute super cut of the funny shit that happens in Demon Wind. And that's all like then I wouldn't have to sit for an hour and 37 minutes watching this bullshit for our podcast. I could just be like, hey, guys, watch this five minute thing and then we'll talk about that for 30 minutes. (laughs) Because I I noticed something when I was watching this the second time, which is that I feel like this movie would actually I don't know if good is the word for it, but would make a good double feature with spookies because they're both just like completely like good 20 minutes hidden within an hour and 40 minutes of garbage yeah and the thing is is that they both kind of ride this line between we know we're making a kind of a pastiche tongue-in-cheek horror comedy and then oh let's try and have these terrible actors emote (laughs) and also let's spend about 75 percent uh, like, oh, let's let's do like X amount of effects, but only have 75 percent of the budget to do so. So none of the effects look good. Everything just looks mediocre. Yeah. So so, Scott, you you forced this upon. Well, Brian, for the first time and me for the second time. Um, how about you walk us through this fucking movie? Because I have like nothing. Maybe I was so pleasure. baffled by what I was watching and I've seen it before and I was baffled by what I was but watching. But you forgot, right? You forgot what was in this movie. I forgot what was in this movie. <laughs> I, this is my third time watching it. Like, I don't know. I don't think I can watch this movie again. Like, I think that this is this is it. I'd be concerned if you end. I'm concerned you watched it three <laughs> times. I watched it twice. Well, I watched yeah, it, it three times. To be like, I don't want to see that anymore. Yeah, I watched it two times and I'm unhappy about both of them. I'm not saying I'm happy, but like I watched it one time and I was like, holy shit, this movie is ridiculous. This would be perfect for, you know, like I I think that we were a horror movie night by that time when I had first seen it. So, yeah. um, Well, I mean, I know that our first episode was supposed to be horror movie night. So I watched it um a second time for the the first time we were supposed to discuss it. Uh, Yeah, because it was a listener submitted. It was a listener oh, submitted the first oh, time you watched it. Okay. Yeah. But you right, were so. like, I remember the one thing I do remember about that episode 
was that we kept ragging on you because we were like, what the fuck is this? And when we got the email, you read it before any of us and you were like, yo, we have to do Demon Wind. Like you were <laughs> so adamant that that was like the best thing that we could possibly watch. <laughs> that, that is a foul extrapolation of reality but there's no tr- that you know we have no proof either way so listeners you pick am i the asshole you calling this you call this fake news is that what we're at now <laughs> <laughs> wow man we're almost as topical as analog jones <laughs> my first note is actually am i really taking notes for this again with three question marks <laughs> so i was i wasn't happy with myself let me also put a little bit of shine a little bit of light behind the doorway here. I originally had picked another movie that I will discuss in my What Did We Watch This Week that really didn't cut it for a horror movie night pick. Um, uh, Matt, you watched it, right? I watched, I I got about five minutes into it and I've never done this to Scott before and Scott can attest to this, but I sent him a message and said, are you sure about this pick? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I was halfway through it and I was like, yeah, this isn't, like, I didn't remember this movie correctly. It's way, the tone is way too dark and not funny enough for us. So um, I was like, hey, if if B. Kelly hasn't watched it yet, let's, uh, can we do another one? And you were like, yeah, sure. Well, what's something else we could do? I was like, well, uh, let me look at my list. And I said, Demon Wind or The Kindred? And you're like, Demon Wind. Like, there was no lag. So if, if I am at fault Two thirds of it is my fault, but a third of it is yours because now, you definitely immediately said, let's watch Demon Wind. I said, let's watch Demon Wind because I physically knew that it was on YouTube and I wouldn't have to do any additional searching for it. But the kindred is on YouTube as well. Well, then I it's OK. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> B. Uh, Kelly, I owe you one because the kindred is a much better bad horror movie and we'll do it at some future date together. All right. Well, the other all right. The, good. the other thing that we can reveal is that when I called Brian to tell him that we were changing the movie, he said, I didn't realize we were going to talk about two movies. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you reached out. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I was ready for Bogged and that was it. <laughs> Bones were tied. And then I found myself at 7 a.m. watching this movie. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to watch. 7 a.m. watching Demon Wind is rough. Like, that is the roughest I can imagine. Like, it, unless it's, you were hungover watching this movie, I don't think that anything could be worse than watching this 7 a.m. sober. It wasn't fun. <laughs> no, I'm it sorry. wasn't fun. But, but I did, I will say the one thing I took away from the beginning of the movie, and it's not necessarily a funny scene or good scene. It's just like, I'm the king of being distant in a relationship <laughs> and not opening up. And, and the line when she says, what are you thinking about? And he was like, just thinking about driving. I was like, wow, I've never used that. And that's going to be He's single. Or maybe, I don't know. He, he will be after this drops. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so here's the main reason I watched Demon Wind for the first time. It's been on YouTube for like a decade. So it's not like nobody gives a shit about this film enough to, to do a, a YouTube cease and desist or whatever they are. Because like clean a ownership to this pile of garbage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that happens with a a good portion of what we discuss here, but this one, so much so. And it was written and directed by the same person, so you know it was a labor of love, but I I feel like they've just been like, yeah, that was a weird time in my life. And this movie came out in 1990. It does not look like a movie from 1990 at all, especially the painted-on effects on the actual film, which probably was the most expensive effect that they had or, or the like the glowing orange orbs and the the squiggly blue lines and shit. But because um, somebody actually had to go in and actually paint um, on the, the film, that must have been the most expensive part. Or they had a friend do it because it doesn't even look good. But the the other thing that cost the most was the do you guys remember the 3D box art that this had? It had one of those like. It had um, I'm familiar with uh, the uh, cover because of it's like what the main photo is on on YouTube. But I have never seen or heard of this thing until this podcast. Yeah, no, no, it was it was at the grocery store. It was at the two places where we could rent movies when I was a kid. And 
it scared the piss out of me. This and Mirror Mirror, because Mirror Mirror, which is also a terrible movie that I would not recommend for our podcast because it's not funny. But Mirror Mirror had like one of those, you know, those. The, did you guys collect superhero trading cards yes. in the nineties? Yes, I still have them. I have a bunch too. God, I, how how are we not virgins still? Like, I mean, at least you're married. I, I got nothing going for me. <laughs> well, you got the internet, and there's tons of porn yeah, on there. Yeah, that is helpful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and and you know, like ten year old me, probably somewhere deep inside of me, wishes that I watched more cosplay or looked at more cosplay nudity because there's a lot of it out there. But it's it really is is not my it's not my thing because it's all anime. If there were more superheroes getting it on, maybe maybe I'd be in a different boat in life. But anyway, you know those foil uh, holograph cards? The Mirror Mirror cover, like the box art, had a holographic piece. Like the mirror itself was holographic. And so when you move it, it went from an old woman to a scary face old woman. Oh, like Uncle Sam and Jack Frost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was like actually. So the Demon Wind cover was like that, but it had an the entire thing was like this weird. It looked like crimped plastic. I think that the the Jack Frost and um, Uncle Sam covers were like that too, where it's like this weird piece of plastic on the front of the the cardboard. Yeah. And so when you move it, it would do two things, and it made the demon um, on the front of this demon wind, like the the cover of it is, and the poster is the same design. So the poster is this weird demon bursting through a window and like these curtains are going everywhere and glass is shattering. When you moved the box itself, it would like the shards would move, the shards of glass would move and the demon would get bigger and it'd be get, coming towards you. And to me as a kid, that was so sickening, sickeningly interesting. Like I would pick that up and I would stare at it and be like, I bet this movie is so scary. <laughs> It's not. It's not scary. I wonder how much. I wonder if their production costs were like 50 50 split between making the movie and making that box art. Yeah, had to have been because not much money was put in this movie. No, no. So the first thing you see in this movie is um, a body burning on a cross, and the smoke is apparently toxic because somebody's dead body is like laying right next to it, and the smoke is. Uh, like kind of drifting over it. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this movie, it was the impetus for M. Night Shyamalan to do The Happening because you have to run away from the wind in this movie. We should like send him a twi- uh, tweet and see what he says. We know about demon wind, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing boggles my mind, and this is like all fairly early on in the movie, which is like, I would say 90% of my notes are from like the first five, 10 minutes of this movie. Yeah, because you got sick of taking notes. Oh yeah. I did too. First of all, we have this crazy opening song. <laughs> oh, are you watching The Blood of the Lamb? Yeah. I need to know this. And then like, I just wrote down down the noises George makes as he's vomiting. <laughs> oh, so much oatmeal was wasted like, in this. Oh my god! <laughs> None of these people should be friends. I just wanted to make sure that we're aware. No, of that. they're awful. Dell is the jock, right? And he is the biggest prick. He like so. First of all, Corey and I believe his girlfriend because because the blonde that he goes to the house with is it, it's set up that they're like bickering in the car on the way there like they're together but no at no other point in the movie do they ever act like they give a shit about each other yeah no no but uh so they're bickering in the, in the car and you know b kelly got his new his new way of ignoring his pieces of ass <laughs> um, <laughs> and then we get weird dream sequence where there's a gas station man butt yeah 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 i i think i think that that should be my uh you guys ever listen to the band zeke no, mm, no. Uh, they're like this this um really fast punk band like hot rod talking punk band they're they're fun i i don't know what you would really classify them as like what subgenre of punk but if i had a band like zeke i would call it gas station man butt so <laughs> Dell shows up at this diner where they're at and this is everyone it's so weird he like full mouth kisses Corey's girlfriend but then he's she's like into it and she's like, oh, you cad. And then he goes back to his girlfriend with the the, sh- the short brown bob hair and like just tastes her tonsils. And he's like, that's why I keep you around, baby. He man, he sucks. He sucks so hard. But then um, they're, they're like 
once again, these 20 some year olds are way too jazzed about beer because he's Dell's like, who's drinking beers or something like that. And, and so like he gets a beer and the other, everybody else has Cokes and then they leave because who uh, wants Joe beers? gets a gun I'll in his face. <laughs> <laughs> that one's not beer. He said, what's this? Just say no week. No, it's the <laughs> afternoon. You fucking alcoholic. No one wants yeah. a beer right now. <laughs> yeah. Also, they're all there to like support Corey going to the house where his dad slit his own wrists and Dell's yes. like, let's get fucked up. <laughs> But you know who I hate more than him is the nerdy friend just because when he came in and the girls like did the kiss and, and I had to write the quote down, which is bizarre greeting ritual of the subculture. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> who says that? Yeah. And, and it's not just the it's not just the script. These people are cardboard cut up people like they're awful. They're not even trying. No. I mean, at least in Bugged, they're somewhat charming people doing really bad lines you know yeah. I, don't no, know. I would i would argue this was worse than bugged i'm throwing that out there no i wouldn't say that i wouldn't i would say they both equally ruined my day <laughs> <laughs> as long as you didn't watch them back to back yeah, yeah. so we, now we get to the point where the magician guys show up and the movie really starts to pick up ridiculousness so this the, they're in a convertible, right? And the one guy is standing like it's a chariot and he's got a, a cape and he throws this thing of fake flowers at the at Dell's girlfriend and she catches them. Like if some asshole that was my ex-boyfriend shows up like an idiot and throws fake flowers at me, I'd let them hit me in the chest and just be like, fuck you. But she yeah. like catches him and is all confused and Dell's just like, Huh? <laughs> and, and so they stop and then um more magic ensues and then Dell like I think he throws his beer can at the magi- the one magician and the magician does the weirdest triple spin kick kicks the can up in the air and then kicks it and it smacks Dell in the face. Yeah, for a split second and I thought welcome. I was still watching Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that comes back later on in the film. And is such a stupid callback. Like, why do they have a ninja magician? Like, ninja magician. Somebody was on coke <laughs> and thought that that would be a great addition to Demon Win. But that was the greatest fuck you that anyone could have ever done. Because I'm a sucker for those, like, kid gets bullied in instant karma. Yeah. And imagine if some guy just starts talking shit. So you pull out your handkerchief. Throw it in the sky, it becomes a dove, and then shits, and on, shits on you. Shits on you on the guy. Yeah. But also, like, where is that dove going? That is a captive <laughs> dove that he just let out in the wild. It sh- yeah, it shit on the jock that took your girlfriend, but you just left like a poor captive animal that relies on you for food and shelter to die. <laughs> <laughs> at least there's no dead dogs in this movie but we get a dead dove yeah alleged dead dove or we can only assume is a dead dove yeah i mean this is like one of those homeward bound type or is a no milo and otis is a milo and otis moment if there ever was one so they go to the house where that's all burnt out but then if you go through the door you go either back in time or to this weird other dimension where the the house isn't burnt up and and then one of the idiot girls reads from the drywall of the dead. She reads the spell. <laughs> and then everything starts blowing up. And there was a turkey that was apparently cooked with an M80 inside. And just like, Phew. and I bet that like everybody that was on set was like, man, you're going to waste this gigantic, like 20 or 30 pound turkey that we could have eaten. Because, you know, everybody, all actors care about on set is like the spread that they get. You know, the food, they, they get paid on set. And so they're like, you probably are giving us like fucking finger food and you're blowing off a roasted turkey. Yeah. That, that stuck with me. But these magicians <laughs> have shotguns. Oh, am I missing the part where the one girl gets turned into a doll? I don't think we got to that point. That point. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're getting, they get teleported around by the fog and they're like, I've never seen fog like this. Look, it's coming back. Oh no, here it comes again. Those are actual lines from this film. <laughs> And I'm putting more inflection into my reading of notes than they were of the script. But yeah, then the girl is like a creepy child appears. And then one of the actresses is like, don't let, don't bury me here. And then one of the girls 
turns her, one of the, like the creepy children turns her into a doll with a bloody mouth. Her boyfriend picks her up and the, and moves the doll's mouth. Like he literally just moves the doll's mouth and the doll says, you lied and then bursts into flames. And the guy isn't like upset. No, he looks like disappointed. Like it like he dropped an ice cream cone. Like it wasn't like his <laughs> girlfriend. I was just like, no, sad. Yeah. He, yeah, he, you're learning so much about how to be shitty to girlfriends in this movie, aren't you? I really am. I'm just trying to find the silver lining here. <laughs> They're all like, okay, well, I guess we can't make our cars drive, so let's go into the haunted house. And so Dell's girlfriend is walking towards the haunted house, and the magician is like, we need to talk about our failed relationship. And like try and get you back. He's like, I still am in love with you. Dell sees the whole thing, walks up. And punches the guy in the mouth and he's like, do you really want to fight right now? He's like, we got nothing to fight about. And so they walk in. It was the most anticlimactic fight. They just one punch thrown. And that jock is like, yeah, that's right. And he probably, if, if this movie was made five years later or five years earlier, he would have called the guy a fag again because that would have been acceptable in 1985. Yeah. So they go into the, the house and they find this book. And uh, Corey, the main guy and his girlfriend, find the book and it, he reads the diary and he learns about these seven daggers that can kill the son of Satan, which is like, I'm not getting that from this monster later on, just FYI, but they only have two daggers left and they waste one. And then the other one doesn't even get used. Like it, it's, it's a non-entity in this movie. And he reads most of the diary to the, to his weird friends. And then like, it just abruptly ends. It's like, you know, on Reddit, when people talk about candle Jack, but candle Jack presses return. So that people actually post their, their comments. It's like candle Jack's not real. Yeah. You know, like that. It's like somebody killed them as they were re- writing the last part of this diary entry. Oh, God. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So then we could just burn through the rest of this movie because the uh, the topless woman shows up outside and the only people that see her are the magicians and they look at each other and say in unison, demon, because no woman would be walking around outside showing her tits to these random dudes in the middle of the night. So the magicians go outside with guns and the demon shows up and is like, surprise! <laughs> It was just so weird. And then the demon zombies are all full of pudding. Like all this squib work, they're not full of blood. They're full of like pudding. It's like the invisible, or incredible melting man <laughs> all over again. Oh. The ninja magician roundhouse decapitates somebody. And that's like the only callback. It's such a disappointment. And then he, and then he turns around. And he's like, he gets back to the house. He's like, I'm safe. And then he turns around, and the that one, de- the topless demon is like, surprise again. <laughs> <laughs> Your I, impression of the demon sounds like any character on South Park ever. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I'm just trying to find all the best shit from this shit movie. So we get to the... Um, You're going to be searching for a fucking while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get to this, another real head scratcher where they all run out to... Um, the barn. They all run out to the barn and there's this quote unquote beautiful skeleton with a bull skull or like a... You know, oh, it's got, this, is, this is the best part in the movie. The tongue today. monster kill. Oh it my makes, God. Yeah, I remember talking about how ridiculous and great that was when we discussed this movie before. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. It's great. Yeah. And it makes no sense because they just let it happen. Yeah. And why, why are these two other people showing up? Is it like they, they didn't show up for the first week of filming and then they show up in time to just get killed later on? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This movie kind of got lost at the end, I feel like. And they I think put, it got lost in the beginning. Also, yeah, they, it's never it got a little lost in the middle but, as well. But genuinely, <laughs> like what happened was they. I feel like they. The whole thing was a build up to that cow head that someone had a dream about, and then that happened. They're like, yes. what do we do from here? And they're like, let's just do thriller and Night of the Living Dead. And they're like, what do you mean? And they're like <laughs> shot for shot thriller and Night of the Living Dead. Well, then you get to, like, the last, like, five minutes of this movie is, Our like, bonkers. rocking. They're so great. He turns in, so, so, the evil it's, it's shows literally, up. well, wait, let me say this, because it's true. It's fucking, it's just the ending to Rock and Roll Nightmare, but, like, shoddier and more ridiculous. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if it's worse. They're, 
equally terrible. But but and there's no spoilers if you haven't seen Rock and Roll Nightmare because we'll get to that eventually, I promise. They just have a bunch of zombies basically running around, but they're demons. And they're so gooey. It's kind of gross. I want to point out that when Jack, that's the guy with the glasses who just like lets his girlfriend get turned into a doll, he gets turned into a demon and um, then feels up the heroin. It's so weird, like horny demons. Yeah. It's, I don't know. And and the weirdest thing is that that guy probably was like, yeah, I get to feel someone up today. And then he goes and they're like, here, put on these prosthetic hands. <laughs> so the evil priest shows up right when all the demon zombies are about to squish Corey and his girlfriend. And he powers up with all the demons and he like, he turns them into orbs and, and takes them into himself and turns into the gooey super shredder. And then Corey casts a spell on himself and makes him one of the aliens from Galaxy Quest. Because he <laughs> looks like a mix of an alien from Galaxy Quest powder and then the mask from uh, Goosebumps. Just all kind wow. of morphed into one. That is way. I was thinking, remember that movie or that TV show that was about the alien cops? Alien Nation? That's what I see when I saw that guy, but you were way closer, BKL, <laughs> because like the ears are straight up the, the monster mask from, from the first Goosebumps episode. Yeah. So he turns himself into this weird creature, and his first thought is to kick Super Shredder Demon in the nuts. <laughs> Like, how, how does that work? And then we get, like, 10 minutes of this weird fight where they're, like, going through different scenes and the and Corey is getting kind of, like, assaulted by his dad committing suicide and all of his friends being alive but dead. And then he just has the girls re- read the rest of the spell and the demon explodes. And then they go back to the diner and somehow the book is now like a laser gun and they kill the woman who was behind the counter, but they miss one of the demon children. And that's the end of the movie. Were they setting up for like a sequel? (sighs) Yeah, I get the gotcha ending is so shit. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they were hoping for a sequel because that was a girl that, that served no per. She served no purpose in that movie except for the ending. She just kind of stood on the hill and pointed a stick at him. Yeah. Her dowsing rod. Yeah. So weird. God, this movie is so strange. Like, I don't hate this movie. I I am just confused by it. Like, I wish that there was a, you know how there's like best worst movie. I wish that there was a best worst movie for this. Yeah, I would like to know how this was made. It, it, it's a, uh, yeah. All right, we've we've <laughs> dedicated so much time to this movie. Two, one and a half. Epi- Twice. Yeah, one and a half episodes really to this. You movie. sound like pained right now. I You're just, like. Yeah, we we added we we put all this time in. Like, I think I just need to take a nap yeah, now. No, I, you broke me, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was either your your head or your butt. I was gonna break you one way or the other. Ah, oh, the smell of the video store. I love this place. You could look at the walls of VHS covers. We had to choose just by looking at the cover and reading the crappy synopsis. It was, you were leaving with one. And the only way to know what new movies were coming out is you actually had to watch the trailers instead of skipping them. Right, we didn't have the internet to look it up. We had one guy named Todd behind the counter that would (laughs) tell us what was good or not. And Todd strangely liked way too many romantic comedies. Yes, but you always knew when the boobies were coming because Todd made sure. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and remember all the awful CG we had to put up with in the mid-90s? We talk about that a lot, don't we? Join us on Analog Jones in the Temple Film where we talk about VHS tapes. And we wax nostalgia like none other. Available on iTunes. And Podbean. So I want to explain in my What Did We Watch what I watched before this and how this was like a really painful week for me because of last week and this week. So my plan was for us to discuss Rites of Spring. Yeah. Well, wait, wait, let's... Let's get into what did we watch this week. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I needed a definitive place for me to put in the ad. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I hope it's a good ad because we're going to need it. <laughs> Sorry, Analog Jones. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I wrote the I wrote the music for that theme. So if they use the theme, uh, shout out to me. <laughs> okay. So my original plan was to watch and discuss Rites of Spring from, I want to say, 2009 or 2011. 
It's a couple years old. Um, because I was like, I want something that's uh, seasonally appropriate. And I was like, okay, this movie is supposed to take place in the spring. And there's a monster that needs sacrifice. It's basically Children of the Corn, but in the springtime. And so I start watching it. And it is way darker than I, I mean, like, it's not fun. And it's like not actually in the spring. It's more like in August because the corn's ready. And so I'm like, that's not when, like, that's you, you, you harvest corn corn in like september august and september so no that doesn't work for me and it's just dragging and i'm like i'm not getting any good jokes out of this there are no jokes to be had because it's just it bad and really, dark and yeah, it I starts with like a really uncomfortable kidnapping scene like i was just like i don't know about this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah and there's no humor to it like there's nothing there's no like meta commentary it's just trying very hard to be a dark horror film you know like at least with hatchet they are playing very close to the chest with with what they're trying to emulate but with this movie they're like yeah, all these things will work and it they don't it, at all I, I I watched it one time probably when it was new and I thought that it was not terrible. So that's probably what my thought process was now was like, Oh, this will be okay. But it wasn't. So I, I forced myself to finish it because I was like, at least I got something to talk about for my, what did we watch? But yeah, don't watch rice of spring because it's not actually in the springtime and it's not a good movie. <laughs> All, right. Fair enough. All right, Brian. Uh, so last night I watched lost boys for the first time in like, I don't know, 20 years. Uh, I thought you were gonna say like a couple weeks because Lost Boys. How do you not watch that movie all the time? So it's, I, I honestly I remember it being a completely different movie. Not that it wasn't good, but it was uh, it was like more entertaining not to watch it for twenty years because like I forgot that like Alex Winter and Jack Bauer are in it. <laughs> uh, but the only reason it's worth mentioning is because I I was at Jade's house last night and me and her were watching it. So like we started talking about what the movie's about. So you already know I'm I'm not happy because I'm in a conversation. <laughs> and um, she was like, "Is the security guard going to die?" And then it cuts to the security guard dying, and uh, or it doesn't cut to him dying. It just cuts to the movie. She said, "See, told you." Which like predicting a death at the beginning of a movie you don't deserve a fucking medal for that <laughs> it's a horror movie that's what they do so I, <laughs> so I said uh i said wow wow you should be making this movie she said i would make them better if i did so i said really what would you do and this was dead serious i, I almost left her house because of this she said all right so you didn't see him die right so he's gonna show up later in the movie and then when people are like, I thought he died, turns out the camera chasing him was a bee. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So I have a story. So Brian's Brian's current girlfriend, Jade, is easily my favorite person that Brian has ever dated. And it all comes down to one. Why are you qualifying? Why are you qualifying it as his current girlfriend? Like, Jesus, do you have to say his girlfriend? Because because he's dated some real shrubs in the past. So, like, so the first time I met her, we went to the movies and we're sitting there and Brian is like on his phone playing games while like all the ads are playing and one of the ads comes on and he just goes man that ad fucking sucked i could make a better ad than that why aren't they calling me to make ads and she goes because you're playing candy crush (laughs) (laughs) oh she I like yeah, it. Too. He calls Man, him out on his bullshit great. like so quick. It's great. Uh, all right. Yeah, I got so excited to tell her a story the, like a week or two ago. And when I was done, she just said, Wow, wish I could yawn right now. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> wow, you really did find the female version of yourself. <laughs> She's so dry. God damn. All right. So I had to watch the first paranormal activity movie this week. Uh, for you know, it's not it's not that bad. It's, it was okay. I also have to watch the second Paranormal Activity movie as well. Why? Uh, 
Who's making, who's hurt you? <laughs> uh, so that we're recording this way in advance to when it releases, but you probably have already heard me on the Jersey Ghouls podcast while we did uh. our March Madness for horror sequels. So I had to watch 16 horror sequels, but most of them, Holy yeah. shit. 16? Most of them I'd seen enough times that I'm like, I'm not fucking watching that again. Like, I've got that one on lockdown, but I've never seen the Paranormal Activity movies and I've never seen the Insidious movies. So those were the only two that I had to watch one and two of. Um, Paranormal Activity was OK. I'm never going to watch it again now. Oh, no. I do want to give a quick little shout out. This is like obscure as shit. But when Brian and I were kids, our mom made us star in a series of like educational videos for kids that her hospital was producing. And I found the VHS tape. <laughs> so, so I watched that. <laughs> well, how does that have anything to do with watching in? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just moving on to the next thing that I watched this week. <laughs> oh, oh, OK. Uh, oh, wow. Wow. Is you was your mom like the mom from um you know uh oh shit um the I can't remember her the actress's name but the mom from um whatever it takes sort of I would say our mom the best way I've ever described my mom is and I think Brian's backed this up our mom is Kitty from that '70s show and Beverly from the Goldbergs just wrapped into one human being. <laughs> Does she have the annoying laugh too? Uh, she doesn't laugh much. <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because she's got you yeah. two as kids. No, most of most of her is going. Why do you always pick on me? <laughs> <laughs> she is a very supportive mother. Uh, so the other thing I watched was episode six of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers called oh, Food God. Fight. So everybody in the youth center is dressed in raci racially insensitive outfits. Uh, and there's this scene they're doing like a big like, oh, you can eat foods from all these other cultures. And the main like guy who runs the youth centers walking around with two Bavarian cream pies in his hands. And he, oh, no. And he's dressed in a Hawaiian shirt. And all of a sudden there's like these two girls dressed as hula girls. And they're like, hey. Hey, and he's like, hey, and he's like holding the pies and then Bulk and Skull are over there and he goes, hey, guys, come and help me with this. And they go and like start to smack on the girls. And he's like, not the girls, the pies. And he like <laughs> hands on the pies. Uh, this is like the shittiest that Rita's voiceover has ever been because her mouth is completely closed and she's giving like a full speech. We jump back to the youth center, and this is the quote of the entire show for me. Bulk goes, a bunch of goody goods are about to get creamed. By pies, that is. <laughs> oh, <whoa. laughs> um, so Bulk and Skull start a food fight, and one dude is just standing in the middle of the room, screaming and squeezing ketchup and mustard bottles into the sky. <laughs> like He's not even aiming at anybody. <laughs> Um, but the villain in this is Pudgy Pig, who I totally remember. Like, he's one of the characters where I'm like, oh, I remember that guy. Because he's just like a giant pig head with like a fucking Viking helmet on. But like the design is super problematic because the head, the way that the head's built, the arms are in the middle of the mouth as opposed to on the outside of the mouth. Um, there's a part where Jason fights Bulk with some hot dog links that are like nunchucks. And that's when I realized that Bulk reminds me of Francis from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh, it's oh, yeah, it, it's five minutes into the episode and the food fight is still happening. Um, <laughs> they finally stop the food fight and the Power Rangers get in trouble for starting it but they get they go to the control center and this is when Zordon's like it's Pudgy Pig I've done the math and he will consume all of the food on earth in the next 48 hours and I'm like fucking how he's been around for two hours and he's not done with this one town um, <laughs> so the pig eats all of their weapons and every time he eats a weapon he farts which is like absurd to me <laughs> and then he attacks the food festival and has a stare down with bulk and it's supposed to be like yet another fat joke where he like recognizes bulk as another giant pig um and then they show up and they're like, he's eaten everything in sight. 
And then they proceed to look at all of the hot foods that he left behind and discuss how probably he can't handle hot foods. And there's a line where he goes, thank God we have these spicy radishes that we can feed him. <laughs> Which, I mean, Scott, you eat vegetables a lot. Are spicy radishes a thing? Or <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I don't know. So they find and they fight the pig at a meat, pack, a meat packing plant and they force the spicy radish in his throat and it makes him vomit up all their weapons. And uh, then they make the mega weapon. And that's when I realized that the sword does nothing in that weapon. <laughs> like, it is pointless in that weapon. Uh, there's not even a giant kaiju fight. And then at the end, you find out that the food at this fucking food festival is $20 a sandwich. $20 a sandwich, Scott. That's ridiculous. $20 a sandwich Jesus. in 1995. Yeah. Yeah. The burgers at Demon Wins Gas Station was 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> they noticed that. <laughs> All right, well, that was Demon Win from 1990, as picked by Scott. So thanks again for that, Scott. Uh, we are dangerously close to the next Listener Submit It month, so don't forget to send us emails at hmnpodcast at gmail.com so that we can find out what movies you want us to suffer through. We're pretty sure we have everything picked, but there's always a chance for something to squeak on by. Uh, and don't forget to visit our website at hmnpodcast.com check out our patreon account at patreon.com backslash hmnpodcast brian it's been a pleasure having you on thank you once again for joining us is there anything you want to promote real quick before we wrap this up uh yeah just to promote real quick if you guys get a chance on youtube look up popcorn lucas lucas is a very good friend of mine (laughs) um he is overly gay and it doesn't matter if you're a straight gay whatever i guarantee you he will make you uncomfortable (laughs) (laughs) all right thank you brian no problem listening to the Geekscape Network. 